On September 25, 1953, Chilean lawyer Genaro Gajardo went before the notary of his home city to claim property over the moon. According to Chilean law, anyone can request a title to unclaimed land, provided that the request is published three times in the local press and that no one has grounds to challenge it, amongst other conditions. Thus, Gajardo filled out the forms, published the three advertisements, waited for the 30 days, and when all legal requirements were fulfilled, the Chilean institution entrusted with registration of real estate confirmed Gajardo as the legal owner of the moon. In several interviews, he explained that his ultimate aim was not to make money with the moon, but to give it to all his fellow countrymen, to all Chileans, as a shared legacy for everyone else. Little over a decade after Gajardo's claim, in the midst of the so-called space race that confronted the United States with the Soviet Union during the Cold War, in 1967 entered into force the United Nations Outer Space Treaty, which aim is to norm and regulate space exploration. Its Article 2 establishes outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies, is not subject to national appropriation by claim of sovereignty, by means of use or occupation, or by any other means. The article intended to prevent claims of property or sovereignty by flag-waving ceremonies, such as it has been done in the past where sailors would arrive to an island such as Australia, put a flag and claim it as their own. Actually, the Apollo mission that first landed on the moon, in the lunar mole, there was a plague that declared, we came in peace for all of mankind, not just for the astronauts or the governments that send them there. However, the Outer Space Treaty does not say anything about private property. Given this, Dennis Hope, a United States-born entrepreneur, took advantage of this loophole and obviously unaware of Gajardo's previous claim, asserted that the moon was unclaimed property and accordingly wrote a declaration of ownership to the UN detailing his intentions to subdivide and sell lunar parcels. The United Nations never answered his letter, so he considered himself to have a legal right to the moon and all of its minerals. In 1980, Hope asked a U.S. court to recognize the moon and all other planets as its property, which the court did. Ever since, Hope has sold millions of acres of the moon, Mars, and other planets through his company Lunar Embassy Corp. Moreover, he has set up his own galactic government, a democratic republic, which has a constitution a parliament, currency, and even a patent office. Among its citizens can be found personalities such as U.S. President George Bush or Ronald Reagan, together with sci-fi personalities as Tom Cruise and George Lucas, the one who created Star Wars, as well as multinational corporations like Hilton and Marriott Hotels. Regardless if you consider Gajardo's and Hope ownership declaration to be really smart or terribly ridiculous, they raise relevant questions about the implications of the relations of we Earthlings with the rest of the universe. For example, the Outer Space Treaty Declaration forbids all kinds of sovereignty claims over other planets or the moon. But to be able to prohibit something, that means that you need to have some kind of control over that thing that you are prohibiting others to do or to go there. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense. Likewise, the Chilean institution or the U.S. court that granted ownership titles, they can only grant titles of ownership if they have some sort of control or if they own something. The question is, can you really give away something that is not yours? Can you really give as a gift something that is not your property? In line with the Outer Space Treaty, the United Nations Environmental Program defines outer space 
together with the high seas, the atmosphere, and Antarctica as the global commons. Global commons are areas or resources that lie outside the political reach of any country. For example, the ocean. Anyone can go to the high seas and sail. There's a right to navigation that no one can tell you not to do. It's only when you get to the sea close to the shore that you need to abide by the law of each country. Global commons have historically been guided by the common heritage of mankind principle, an ethical and legal concept that establishes that some areas belong to all humanity, that no one can be denied the right to go there, for example. But the question is, on what grounds can we claim that we own the whole universe. To begin with, in the case of outer space, it seems a bit ironic to define it as a global common, considering that outer space is actually outside the globe, outside planet Earth. But more importantly, if we are saying that we own the whole universe, does this mean that our laws and institutions applied all over the universe? as big as immense as it is, this just s seems a bit too much. More likely is that when we speak about sovereignty or ownership, what we're doing it is that we're establishing ways to relate with each other. We are saying what we cannot do in regards of certain things. When I'm saying that I'm the owner of a car, what I'm saying is that no one can use it unless they ask me. So. When we're speaking about the status of outer space, of who owns it, what we're saying is how we relate to outer space. And that is why it's so important that if we define it as a global common, as something that is owned by everyone, it means that we all have rights to go there and we all have the right to benefit from the use of the resources that are out there. Asking who owns the moon or who can claim property on Mars is now more relevant than ever since NASA has declared that it's developing the capabilities needed to send humans to an asteroid by 2025 and to Mars in the 2030s. For its part, SpaceX, a private company founded by Elon Musk with the express goal of making humans a multiplanetary species, affirms that it will launch its first manned mission sometime in 2024 in order to arrive to Mars by 2025. So the question is, if a group of SpaceX astronauts are the first humans to land on Mars, can they claim property? And considering that they would have arrived to Mars as employees of a private company, can they claim property in their own name, in the name of the company, or in the company's founder, who was the guy who actually gave the funds for the expedition? Likewise, if the first to arrive to Mars are NASA astronauts, given that this is a governmental agency, can they make legitimate claims of sovereignty? The Outer Space Treaty says that they can. So, can they claim property in their own name or in the name of mankind. Asking who can claim property in outer space and on what grounds is extremely relevant since current international law, such as the Outer Space Treaty, only says what states cannot do, but it doesn't say what private individuals or company can actually do, like for example, to exploit mineral resources or to conduct tourist expeditions. 50 years ago, when the treaty was drafted and approved, these were only hypothetical questions. Nowadays, these are real challenges that both philosophy and international law must address. The answers, well, they are an ongoing debate.